Following J.J. Thompson's discovery of the electron, many scientists began to think about the structure of the atom. So different scientists proposed different models and theories that aim to describe the structure of the atom. And one of the more successful theories or models became known as the Bohr model proposed by Niels Bohr. Now the reason this was a somewhat successful model was because it did two things correctly. Firstly, it incorporated the quantum theory of energy, the fact that energy is quantized, it exists in discrete units known as quanta or photons. And secondly, it explained the production of the emission and absorption line spectrum of the hydrogen atom. However, the Bohr model did have many limitations as described in the following four points. So firstly, the Bohr model could not explain the production of line spectra of more complex atoms. It could not even explain the production of line spectra by the helium atom. Secondly, it did not explain the finer details that deal with the line spectra such as why certain lines are brighter than other lines. Thirdly, it could not explain the bonding between atoms that takes place in solids and liquids. And finally, it did not incorporate the wave-particle duality of nature. So by the mid-1920s, it became clear that the Bohr theory was not a very sufficient theory. It was not a very satisfactory theory from a theoretical perspective and from an experimental point of view. And that's exactly why in 1925, a much more comprehensive theory was developed by two leading physicists, one by the name of Heisenberg and the second one by the name of Schrodinger. And this theory became known as quantum mechanics. So basically, quantum mechanics is this comprehensive theory that deals primarily with the atomic and subatomic world. So quantum mechanics ended up being a very successful theory and is accepted virtually by all scientists today. But why? What exactly made quantum mechanics such a successful theory? Well, firstly, quantum mechanics explained the production of line spectrum produced by all different types of atoms, simple and complex. And it also explained the finer detail of the line spectrum, such as why certain lines appear brighter than other lines. Secondly, quantum mechanics incorporated not only the quantum theory of energy, but it also incorporated the wave-particle duality of nature. Thirdly, it helps explain many important phenomena from black body radiation to the bonding that takes place between atoms in solids and liquids. In fact, when quantum mechanics is applied to the macroscopic world, it is readily able to produce all the laws and equations that deal with classical physics. And this is known as the correspondence principle. So quantum mechanics basically obeys the correspondence principle. So quantum mechanics led to many different important applications in physics, engineering, medicine, and many different fields. Now, there are two important points that should be made about quantum mechanics that we're going to discuss in greater detail in a future lecture. Firstly, quantum mechanics incorporates a principle known as the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, which basically tells us that there is a limit to how precise a certain measurement of a certain quantity, such as momentum or energy, can be made. And secondly, quantum mechanics is in fact a statistical theory. So it basically incorporates the wave-particle duality and it represents particles, i.e. electrons, using equations known as wave functions. Now, if you square the wave function, basically that describes the locations of electrons or particles using mathematical probability. So in the next several lectures, we're going to discuss these two points in much greater detail.